How's it going guys? I just wanted to make a quick video reacting to Dark Knight's beautifully made weapon tier list. I did make one change and that was moving the Arendite from C to A tier. I'm guessing his update will be something similar. Your best weapons are going to be in the S and A tier with varying degrees of usefulness and versatility. Looking at this chart, I would agree with it holistically. As you go towards the right, the weapon is less versatile and as you go up, the weapon is more useful. Ideally, you'd like your weapon to be both versatile and useful, which is why most of the S tier weapons are in the upper left hand corner. I'll quickly summarize the weapons from the bottom up. In the D tier, we have Stormbringer, Kaladbolg, and Leviathan. These weapons only give a small amount of 30% attack, with the 2% passive skill which is the weakest when compared to higher tier weapons. I would not recommend investing in these. Next up in C tier, you have the Mistletine, Durandal, and Ancient Katana. Both the Mistletine and Durandal have monster penetration bonuses, which help mostly in slasher mode. These used to be higher, but because there have been more melee characters introduced who perform very well in slasher, there had been less of a need to upgrade these two weapons. The main benefit of the Ancient Katana is its accuracy boost. However, you can still get accuracy from other sources, such as armor bonuses. In the mid to late game, you should have sufficient accuracy without using the sword, so that's why nobody uses this sword anymore. Moving on to B tier, we have very two niche weapons, the Holy Sword, Caliburn, and Bloodlust. The Holy Sword Caliburn increases all skills by one, which is useful to have on your support characters, whereas the Bloodlust is a lot more niche. It is most useful in the end game where you have the weapon maxed out and every extra bonus that helps you survive longer will be an added benefit such as the absorbing effects of the sword. Because it's so niche, I can see why it's in B tier. Finally, we get to the A tier, and these are definitely the weapons you should be upgrading. You'll want to eventually upgrade most of the A tier weapons and all the S tier weapons. Going from right to left, we'll start with addressing the least versatile weapons in A, which are the Aegis Shield and Book of Abundance. These weapons were designed primarily for Vivian and Lugrins, specifically which makes them extremely useful for those characters, but at the cost of being less versatile as their bonuses only apply under certain criteria such as the book requiring the character to be a leaf wizard to maximize its effects. For similar reasons, the dark orb is useful but not so versatile as its additional effects apply only for dark wizards. Luckily there are more dark wizards than other kinds of mages so it is somewhat versatile. The main benefits of this weapon is the added penetration which is useful for areas like Dark Lord's Tower and Guild Territory. The next few weapons are elemental buffing weapons. You have the Elaine, Efreet, and Holy Sword Estia, which provide strong attack boost to water, fire, and light characters respectively. They are more versatile than the previous weapons, as they only care about elements and not class. The Efreet is even more versatile as it can turn Kane into a fire element when equipped by him. Next up are some of the stronger DPS weapons. You have the Dragon Blade, Erendite, Poison Blade, and Ascalon. These weapons vary slightly in terms of usefulness and versatility, but not by much. Dragon Blade is a fantastic DPS weapon in addition to Ascalon. It is more useful and versatile as it provides additional crit rate, whereas Ascalon provides more boss and crit damage. Poison Blade is an interesting one due to its 50% penetration bonus. That's useful to have, however, if you have sufficient penetration without it, then it's okay to leave it unupgraded. And lastly, the Erendite received a recent buff that increased its chance to cast to 20%, so it is very useful on haste characters especially like Mary. It is useful for everyone else as well who might need an extra damage boost. Another use case for this weapon is on characters like Ariel, whose active skill scales off her attack. Finally, we get to the S tier, which includes all the weapons you should max out. Starting on the right, we have the Bow and Triana Axe, which were designed specifically for Arrows and Ariel respectively. Because they are best used with certain characters, these two weapons are less versatile. Because they have a plethora of other bonuses, they are more useful than other elemental weapons below, in A tier. This goes for the next weapon, Ardvar, which is similar to the Efreet, but provides additional stats like penetration and additional damage to leaf enemies, which is significant. The last three weapons in the upper left hand corner are the most useful and versatile. From right to left you have the two great swords and the demon sword. The two great swords is the weapon you want to have on your tank like Kane or Mia as it provides additional damage reduction. And the demon sword has the ability to turn Kane into a dark type which is useful in many scenarios. 
Lastly, we have the Excalibur, which has the highest attack bonus out of all the weapons. It is very versatile, as many characters who don't depend on cooldown reduction as much but do care about attack can utilize it. This includes characters like Yui, Lugrant, Ariel, Mia, and Arrows, to name a few. Overall, I see this tier list as extremely solid. Props to Dark Knight for creating it and sharing it with the Discord. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I hope this video helped you guys. If it did, please support the video by giving it a like and subscribing to the channel if you haven't. That's all I have for today. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Beautiful, beautiful.